We welcome in Coach Dave Wansett. No Rule for the Bears, the guy I thought they might target, but they still need edge rushers, so we're going to play a little game. Name that player. We picked five edge rushers. We're going to give you a blind resume. You're going to try to guess, and then we're going to talk about their potential fit with the Bears. Are you ready? I'm ready. Picking these guys, you, you probably have to be halfway blind. Just pick the board. <laughs> but let's let's go. I'm ready. Hey, anyone I'm ready. Any, anyone can help. All right, let's go to let's go to player A. Uh, here we are. 163 career games, 111 and a half sacks, 130 tackles for loss, 182 quarterback hurries, 34 passes defense. Coach. Who is it? Is it Yannick Ngakwe, Justin Houston, Jadeveon Clowney, Dwayne Smoot, or Carlos Dunlap? It's, uh, I'm going to guess here, I think it's Justin uh, Houston. Look at that. And, and, Look at that. And, 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 is that who it's, it's who it is, yeah. And, and the reason I say it is, is because the guy's 34 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew his age, I knew how many years he's been playing in the league, and I'll tell you what, his production. Yep caught my eye. I mean, it, it really has. I mean, this is a guy that's up there in years, but he's still producing it a pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I don't know what he's like character-wise, locker room-wise, leadership-wise, but as far, if you're going to sign an older guy that's been productive, yeah. this would be your guy. I mean, I mean, think about the last couple of years. I mean, I mean, the last, you know, he's made a couple Pro Bowls, mm -hmm. right? He's made a couple Pro Bowls. The last two years, nine and a half sacks that's last right. year, you know, four and a half and then eight. Mm -hmm. So the guy has been productive, uh, and I got him right. So, so do you, you like him for the Bears? He has familiarity with Matt Eberflus in Indy and Ryan Poles in Kansas City. Uh, I, I would, if he's a good guy and a great locker room guy, I would not have a problem with him. Yeah, I have to think Chiefs, Colts, Ravens, those are good organizations. They Absolutely. don't really sign Absolutely. locker room cancers, right? Okay, player number two, what do we got? All right, 197 games, 100 sacks, 123 tackles for loss. We got 265 quarterback hurries, 77 passes defense. Coach, who is it? Well, I, it, he's an older guy, okay? I yep. know that. Uh, uh, Dunlap? Carlos Dunlap. It is Carlos Dunlap. Carlos Dunlap. Dunlap. He's right. a Miami guy. That's why I, I yep. knew how many years he had played in the league. Now, I personally thought, going back to two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, following him because he's a, a Miami guy, sure. I, I follow those guys, he, uh, I think he's different than Houston from the standpoint that I think his production, I think he's, he's struggling right now. Drop, yeah. he, he, the arrow's pointing down on him, where at least Houston, it's, it's flat. You know, I wouldn't right. say the arrow's going up on right. any of these guys, but it, it's even right now with hasn't, Houston. Hasn't reached the age cliff yet. Absolutely. I, but I think Dunlap is on the way down. So we're out on him for the bit. I'm out on him. Out I, on him. All right. Thinking. Player number three. Sorry, Carlos. Uh, 87 career games, 22 and a half sacks, 27 tackles for loss, 60 hurries, four forced fumbles, five passes defense. Who is it? Is it Ngakwe, Smoot, or Clowney? Wow. Um... Walkway's a lot more productive than that. So I'm going to say, God, is that all Clowney has sacks? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say Smoot. I'm going to say Smoot. Go with Dwayne Smoot. It is Dwayne Smoot. Is it? It is Dwayne I don't know much about him, but yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it's got to be a young guy. Yep. What's his age? He's 28. 28 years yeah. old. So that would fit right there. Not a very productive guy. Nope. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, on him, I think the most sacks he's ever had in one year is six sacks. Six, yep. Is that right? Right, that is right. So you, you, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 one sack at that age, that doesn't excite me. Yeah, you don't like that? I mean, no, I'm, I'm. No, I mean, just, you know, look at Denton, Hampton, and right. some of those guys. I mean, when they were with the Bears, God. Anyway, All okay, right. move on. Yeah, well, we're at Dwayne Smith. We're out on him. Coach is throwing him out. All right, player number four. Here we go. 110 career games, 65 sacks, 65 tackles for loss, 135 hurries, 21 forced fumbles. Who is it, Coach? This is my man, yeah. uh, Yannick. This is the guy, Yannick this, and Godwin. You know, and here's the one thing. I like this guy mm -hmm. for his age, 28, 28 I believe, 28, 28 years yep. old. 28. He's been the most productive. Here's the question I have that has to be answered with him. Sure. Is why so many teams? Mm -hmm. Correct? Right. Bouncing um, around. I mean, he's bounced around. I, I, I was, he, he, he's with Jacksonville four. He's been in the league nine years, yep. and he's been with five different teams. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been one year, one year, one year, but yet he's been productive. What is missing? Right. Why? Why not if a guy comes in like that and has nine, ten sacks, 
why aren't you signing him to a longer-term contract, correct? Yeah, that's fair. Do you think it's a run defense? He's not a good run defender, but he gets he gets nine sacks every season. Every yeah. season of his career, nine sacks. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, then sign him. If, the, if that's the case, if he's a good guy, yeah. and if he fits the culture that, that Ryan Poles and, mm -hmm. and Matt Eberflus are looking for, then I would sign the guy because even though the run, I get the run part, what you're saying, but we need pressure. We so, need pass rush. Yannick Ngakwe says he wants to sign with the team for a multi-year deal because he's sick of bouncing around. Do you give him two years if you're the Bears? If he's a good guy, I'd give him two years. All right, if he's a good guy. We yep, like it. The, Bear, the Bears fans have put up the bat signal already for Yannick Ngakwe. Final player, I think you know who this is. 109 games, 43 sacks, 90 tackles for loss, 109 hurries. You know it's our guy Clowney. Yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> you're out. For a guy his age, what is he, 29 or something, 28? 30, 30, something like that. 30 29, years 30, old. 30, yeah. He, he, to me, production mm -hmm. to go with his reputation doesn't match. Yep. And the guy's been hurt an awful lot. Right. I mean, the, the injury thing and production would would tell me no. All right, so we've decided Yannick Ngakwe is the preferred yeah, target. Yeah, and Houston would be a, a sign if they didn't have anybody, and he's a great team locker room guy. Yep. He was productive the last three or four years. Look at his numbers. I agree. All right, we're going to go to players that are now on the team. Four of the last five seasons, a team that won five or fewer games the year before, made the playoffs the next year, the Bears would obviously qualify, Coach. So we're going to play this or that. Which of these players, I'm going to give you a choice between two players, is more vital to the Bears' hopes of making the playoffs this year? First up, Braxton or Darnell Wright? So Who, Who's more important if the Bears are going to make the playoffs this year? I, I would say Braxton. Okay. I mean, because Braxton, uh, this is a critical year for him. One, uh, Obviously, and I hate to get into the left tackle position, right. but this is his second year. Mm -hmm. And this is when he has to prove to the Bears, coaches, front office, fans, that I have matured mentally yeah. and I've matured physically. Right. You know, all this experience that I got last year, now it's going to pay off. It meant, it meant something. It, it meant something. And if, he, if it doesn't, if we come in and, and right plays at a higher level than him, then, then they could be in the left tackle market. And to me, that would really be detrimental to the Bears' progress. All right, we're going to go to now Darnell Mooney or Cole Komet. Who is more vital to a playoff push? I, I, I got to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to say Mooney. Okay. And, and I'll tell you why I'll say Mooney is I think Komet has established himself. Okay. You know, I, I think everybody, the fans, the front office, the coaches, Komet is a guy you can win with. Yep. We know what Komet can do, what his strengths and what his weaknesses are. There's still some question with Mooney, I think, a little bit. We saw him make some big plays. Mm -hmm. We know he's got speed. He had speed. He's right. coming off a knee injury, right? Ankle. Ankle injury. Yep. So he's coming, off of, he's coming off of an injury mm -hmm. that could affect his running ability, his cutting ability. Uh, you know, so to me that he's got to come on because I don't see a number two receiver right now, whether it's Claypool or, or whoever, I don't know. So everyone's saying Mooney's the guy, Mooney's the guy, along with uh, Moore. So I think for the Justin Fields to make another step, he, boy, having another receiver that can make plays would be big. Yeah, I agree. The Bears made two big additions this offseason, DJ Moore, Tremaine Edmonds. Which one of those guys is more vital to their playoff push? Oh, it's, it's DJ Moore. Yeah. You know, for, I mean... Uh, Another layer on what we're talking we just talked about with Mooney. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing, and I've been around some quarterbacks that are trying to gain their confidence and gain experience, a lot like Justin Fields, and nothing helps them come along faster mm -hmm. than having some experienced receivers that can make plays for them when everything is not perfect. And that's what DJ Moore can do. Edmonds is going to be a great player, he's going to have a great year. But, you know, making a lot of tackles, if that defensive line is playing great, then they're going to get him in long yardage situations, and Edmonds will have more of an impact because he can defend the pass. Right. But I don't see the defense being there just yet, so I believe it's going to be more. Also, we talked about the questions about Mooney and Claypool. Having a guy like DJ Moore makes those less of question marks because they have at least one guy. Absolutely, right. absolutely. No question about it. All right, let's go to two rookies, Jervon Dexter, Zach Pickens. Who, who do the Bears need more out of to make the playoffs? You know what? I, I, I would say either one. Either. <laughs> one or the two. You know, and, and I don't know how, obviously, one was a second-round pick, one was a third-round pick. Yeah, right. You know, so that separates a little bit, but let's, let's not lose. You know, they, they signed Billings as a free agent. Yeah. 
and they signed who? Jones, yep. right? Uh, and Demarcus Walker. Demarcus Walker. So they signed three free agents. Two, Jones is a tackle. Yep. Billings is a tackle. Yep. These guys are tackles. I think they got to have one of the two. Okay. Because you're going to get into a rotation. And everybody, everybody looks at the depth chart now, but now when you get to game day mm -hmm. and you can only – you know, have so many guys active. Right. You want those four edge guys, mm -hmm. and now you generally have three, three. tackles right. and rotate them. So if the two veteran guys come on for us that we signed as free agents, mm -hmm. I if all we need is one of those two guys to really be a playmaker. And in this scheme, you know, keep in mind, it's not a blitzing scheme. Yep. So this scheme of defense comes down to the defensive linemen being playmakers. Right. So whichever one of these guys early on in the preseason and training camp is making those tackles for losses mm -hmm. and pressuring the quarterback, he's definitely going to get the edge. All right, final category, fourth-round darlings, Tyler Scott or Roshan Johnson? Oh, well, I, I think Roshan Johnson because I'll tell you why. And when I was up, I think Tyler Scott has already got a spot on, and they know how he's going to use them. Yeah. You know, he can do some returning. He can be a gimmick guy. He can do the reverses, the quick screen. I mean, they, they got a plan for him. Put him aside. Okay. You know, the key is we, we with with David Montgomery being gone, yeah. and I know we have backs here. I'm not I'm I'm not not down on any of our backs, but to me, Johnson needs to prove. Think about where he came from. He comes from Texas. Where, where he's behind uh, B. John Robinson, B. John Robinson yep. who is Mr. Everything. Yep. Now he's got to prove to everybody that I can be the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and Emmett Smith said it, every at running back position, everybody wants to be the man until they are the man. Right. You know, yeah. and now can you handle it? You know, get, and uh, so to me, Johnson needs to be the guy that really comes through. If he came through and he was a starting wide, and he could block as a, a running back, and he can catch, mm -hmm. and all those things, and he can be a every down player, boy, that would be a great get for he's, the Bears. He's probably the guy who's most equipped to fill Dave Montgomery's role if he becomes everything the Bears want him to be. And they're going to need that. That's right. Coach Wansett, always a pleasure. Thanks for the knowledge. Sure.